Think about how many hours a day you spend with your children. Now think about how much time they spend in school. Administrators and teachers have a daunting task, watching and overseeing all of our children 30 to 40 hours a week. Now, for this system to work, we need to trust our educators, believe that they will do everything in their power to keep our children safe and do no harm themselves. Tonight, that trust is broken. As we understand, uh, we believe that oral sex occurred. It occurred in a classroom, uh, which is supposed to be a safe haven. Second graders engaged in oral sex, a little girl and a little boy. The second incident in the same classroom in just days. Broken trust. Where was the teacher? This guy served six months in prison for molesting a 12-year-old. Now he's out of jail, volunteering at a school, working with other children. A convicted sex offender? Broken trust in the school system. A sickening case of broken trust by a middle school basketball coach. A man who admits to police he tried to force a 14-year-old girl into oral sex. The ultimatum? Give oral sex to the teens on the team or forget getting hired. You just said, why don't you just go kill yourself? A teacher tells a sixth grader to go shoot himself. But the superintendent says she's an excellent teacher. In a weak moment, she did something inappropriate. Controversy, opinion, point of view. This is Prime News. Good evening, I'm Vinny Politan. Welcome to Prime News. It's infuriating. Parents are fed up in our first case of broken trust tonight. A convicted sex offender who gets out of prison that immediately works with children. How does this happen? 24-year-old Joseph Denise spent six months behind bars for sexually abusing a 12-year-old boy. Then he gets out, volunteers at a church in Queens, works as a religion instructor. And the church, the school, neither did an updated background check on this guy. No one knew it took the sex offender trying to strike up a relationship with a little boy on Facebook. A parent has to get suspicious and investigate. Not the school, not the church. Unbelievable. Joining me now, tonight, Dorian Mercier, a parent with kids at St. Mel's School. Also with us, Stephanie Wilder-Taylor, author of Sippy Cups Are Not for Chardonnay. Our education and parenting expert, radio talk show host, Dom Giordano, who is also a former teacher, clinical psychologist, Sheila Raja, and Mark Iglarsh, criminal defense attorney and former prosecutor. All right, let me begin with the parent, Dorian. Dorian, uh, when I heard this story, I was like, come on. Uh, for me to coach youth sports, I go down, I get fingerprinted, they do a whole background check year after year after year. This is someone who has no children at the school, uh, no children in the church, and decides to come down and spend some time with the kids. No one did a background check, Dorian. To, but the parents did, right? Yes. I'm sorry, I can hardly hear you. Okay, Dorian, can you hear me now? Yes, I can. All right, Dorian, tell me this. How, how upset are you that this guy was allowed to come down, get that close to these little, little boys and little girls after getting out of prison? No one checked them out. Well, the, the parents, the parishioners... All of us are extremely upset and angry. We're scared. Um, it was extremely upsetting and shocking. And here's the thing. When, when a background check was finally done, it was pretty simple, wasn't it? Yes, it was. It was conducted, yes. How long parents, did it yes. take to find out that this guy had this history that he had? Uh, I'd say within a half hour. New York, New York State has a... Um, Hot, a hotline where you can call an 800 number and find out the criminal background of any person with limited information, first name, first name, last name. Unbelievable. Let's, uh, let me tell the folks uh, what, what, the, what the school had to say here. St. Mel, which is a school, has no comment. Prime News tried to reach out to the Diocese well, of it Brooklyn. Did not, let, let me be clear, please. It did okay. not happen within the school. Right. It happened within the CCD religious education program, the Faith Formation Office, which is a branch that is ran through St. Mel's Church. The parish. Absolutely. He was, chosen, Absolutely. he was not hired 
by our principal. He was not a teacher. He was hired by our pastor and by a brother there, Brother Lawrence Farm, and that's who he was hired by. He is not part of the school, the CCD. No, no, it's part of the religious education program, right? And we reached yes. out also to the Diocese of Brooklyn. The diocese told a local TV station that every volunteer goes through intensive training and a background check. A diocese representative said a check was done on Denise back in 2005. But it wasn't done after he went to prison in 2009. Now, we also have a statement from the sex offender's attorney. He says his client is under a 24-hour suicide watch. He was ordered by a judge to undergo a psychiatric evaluation. Joseph Denise is also pleading not guilty to some grand larceny charges uh, that he has. All right, all that being said, oh, my goodness. Uh, where do I start? Dom Giordano. All right, CCD teacher, right? Someone who comes in, our kids go there once a week to learn about God, learn about love. This guy obviously has another agenda to get close to kids. How can, how can we not do these checks, knowing what we know? Especially, I'm angry. I'm a Catholic. I'm angry at the Catholic Church with all the history that they have to not do a check on someone without any kids. Yeah, Vinny, I am a Catholic also. My kids have gone through this type of thing, and you're right, with the history of the church, at least the places I know, they've really tightened up on this. Because, as the parents said, the procedures are in place. All they have to do is execute them. And many times, they're relatively easy. Some of these guys, as you know, and I, I know how many you've tracked over the years, are relatively clever. They'll do all kinds of things. But it appears, in this case, they just dropped the ball. If you won't use the system, we're not going to protect kids. Yeah, what you, what you need to do, Mark Iglarsh, is, and, and you know this, anyone who volunteers to be a youth sports coach or volunteers to teach CCD, who doesn't have any children in the class or any kids right. on the team, right. those ones you got to take a, a you, you check out the parents, yes, but you also got to take a, even a closer look at those, right, Mark? Of course, Vinny. The days of acting surprise are over. Predators are good at what they do, so you must screen them properly. You know, it's like the tigers who finally lash out. And people go, I can't believe they acted that way. They're predators. That's what they do. And thus, the diocese failed everyone in this instance. Absolutely. Coming up next on Prime News. A sickening case of broken trust by a middle school basketball coach. A man who admits to police he tried to force a 14-year-old girl into oral sex. The ultimatum, give oral sex to the teens on the team or forget getting hired. What do you think? Call us, 1-877-TELL-HLN.